Hallelujah. There is wonderful name. Yes, there is wonderful name. Yes, there is no other name I know. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Many of us, we don't know the, the purpose of life. Sometimes you see people lamenting because of their challenges, crying because of their setback, complaining, worry. And what is the purpose of life? Your purpose of life will never be fulfilled without heat of trial. Tell your neighbor, the purpose of life will never be fulfilled without heat of trial. Could be said by, could be affliction, or whatever. Tell your neighbor, what is your worry? What are you lamenting about? What are you complaining about? Your purpose of life will never be fulfilled without that. There is no way. So prepare yourself for the battle. Prepare yourself for what? For the battle. Life is not perfect. We are in the war, but we are not part of it. Life is not perfect. We live in a war where the enemy will never allow God's purpose to be fulfilled in our life. You need to put up a fight. That is why we need God. That is why we are here. Can't you hear? You say, this world is not my home. It is. It's not where you sleep or forget it yourself. We live in a world where the enemy will never allow God's purpose to be fulfilled in your life. We need to put up a fight. This is why we need God. This is why we are here. Let him share a revelation with you. Success is not about your weakness. Success is not about your setback. It is about what Jesus did for us at the cross. He made us fit. Tell your neighbor, Jesus made me fit. Mm -hmm. It's a past ten event. It's a past ten victory. You are fit. Jesus made us fit for God. Jesus made us fit for God. You hear what he said on the cross? He said, Father, forgive them the word them it includes both the offender and the offended the accuser and the accused once you are sinned it's forgiven what else again you are fit 
Tell your neighbor, once my sins is forgiven, what follow? Fitness for God. Tell your neighbor, Jesus made me fit for God. If you have lost that fitness, that's grace for you. Spend your time with him. At his feet by meditation. Meditate on his word, on the word of God. So, those of you that you want to rededicate yourself, because we have feet already, it's a past and victory. Sometimes when I give you this, you may probably lose it, but if you are looking for it again, listen to me. Meditate on the word of God and turn it over and over in your heart. That is. Meditation brings revelation. And revelation brings conviction. And a conviction brings real moment. You say, I'm a child of God. If truly you're a child of God, that is a real moment. And real moment, power step. A real moment brings power. Remove me, I'm a child of God. The power step. And power step, step with intent and purpose. So, because it's not a true conversion, that is why power does not follow. Where God talk, power talk. I know many might have lost that grace of being born again. It's a past victory. So here, you can come back to the table again with God. Meditate on the word. Turn it over and over in your heart. Meditation brings conviction. And conviction brings real movement. That is, yes, we are a child of God. Then you become a soldier of God. You are not alone. God is for you, on your side, behind and all. You with God, a majority, that is the moment. If God's for you, what follow? If God's for you, what follow? Hmm? What follow? That is it. Promise of God bring hope. And expectation. So I can see the hope and expectation. You are expecting something. It's, I can see you have received promise. If I'm talking to you, the hope is so great, and the way you laugh, if someone is expecting something, you will see it in his moment, you will see it in his appearance. When somebody, you are expecting something, you are going to the office, somebody promised you a million of dollars, and you know that is true. <laughs> Good after the sun. <laughs> Good after the sun. <laughs> well, but if you doubt what you are going to receive, and you are not sure you will receive it, <laughs> but what I'm seeing now is very true. I want to, I want to congratulate you. It's huge. It's huge. And this is real movement, like I have said. Real movement bring excitement. I mean, real excitement. Real excitement. Look what happened to Peter and Jesus when Jesus was on the sea, and Peter said, oh "Lord, I want to come to you," because real movement. You can see, I want to come to you. He said, come. You can see an attempt to come on his own face. Because Jesus wants to see whether he's genuine. Because our genuine willingness plus God's ability bring about the results. You can see him 
with that genuine desire. So this is what I've seen today. So I'm just I'm prophesying to you that the way out for you has come. So the way out for you has come. Yes, now, what are we talking about? That, that you are worried about. That you are complaining about. And that you are lamenting about. The purpose of life will never be fulfilled without that. Our working with the law, both good and hard time alike. Good and what? Hard time. Like I have said, success is not about your setback. Success is not about your, your, your failure. It is about what Jesus did for you at the cross. On the way to Calvary. When He went to do what? What is again? Success, tell your neighbor, success is not about your failure. Success is not about your setback. Success, it is about what Jesus did for you. At the cross, he made you fit for God. He made me fit to receive. He made me fit to talk to God. He made me fit to eat with God. He went on the cross to set you free. To what else? Spend your time with him. And learn at his feet. How do we learn at his feet? By meditation. Meditate on the word. Turn it over and over in your heart. It's not the way we are reading the Bible today. Bible is not just a book. It's an inspiring one. So, if truly you are a child of God, you talk of real moment, and real moment brings excitement. Even there is no food on the table, you are excited. Even nobody will know the difference when there is money in the pocket and when there is no money in the pocket because your life remains the same. People will not know because you know money in the pocket does not make you a child of God. Without money in your pocket does not make you a child of God. Your vision is different from money in the pocket. The man that is poor is the man that has no vision. Can you see? You can know if truly this man is a, a true child of God. Because real moment bring excitement and promise of God bring hope and expectation. But no hope. A man without hope, you can see, very dejected. The appearance, nothing to write home about. Each time you have little problem, people around you know. And each time you have money, people around you know. What kind of life is this? How can your situation dictate your direction or control rule you? When you are good, you smile. When you are not good, you frown. What kind of Christian is that? 
Hmm? What kind of Christian is that? What is different between you and, and the others? Because those are the things that dictate their direction, dictate their life, dictate their moon, their dominion. Those are the things that dictate their posture. Ask your neighbor, what is different between you and others? Others are happy when there is food on the table. You are happy when there is money in your pocket. You are happy when there is food on the table. How can your situation rule your life? Hmm? The difference between us and others, simple. We are happy when there's money in our pocket. And also, we are happy when there's no money in our pocket. Because the man that is poor is not the man that has no money, but the man without vision. Think about all this. Now, your purpose in life will never be fulfilled without heat of trial. Tell your neighbor. Your purpose in life will never be fulfilled without setback, temptation, affliction. Once again, happy Palm Sunday. I'm happy. I'm just trying to listen to the, the sound of your plan to see whether... Hey, thank you. Thank you. When you listen to the song, you can know whether it's a joyful one or pretentious one or pretentious calm. But the one I'm hearing now, hmm. 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 Yes, it is your heart that is clapping. It's not you. And when our heart clap, God clap. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you are taking this lesson home. Can somebody talk to me? What lesson are you taking home? With just little cancer. Uh, what, what lesson are you taking home? Brother, what are you taking home? What do you hear me saying? Okay, what I'm taking home is that in this life, I cannot escape challenges, number one. Number two, I may be poor physically. The real poverty is if I'm living without a vision. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That is your lesson. That is wonderful. Thank you. Glad for him. Our uh, father wants to talk. You listen to that? He said, it seems he will not be able to es escape challenges. And when that challenge comes, it's meant to prepare him for the future. My name is uh, Engineer Dauda from Niger State. Thank you, sir. I learned a lesson uh, from your message that there are no success in life without challenges. But the challenges are just like fertilizers to make you very strong. Clap for him. <laughs> hey, look at it. Look at that, brother. He says it's a fertilizer. That is a tonic to our anointing. Tell your neighbor, challenges, challenges. is like a fertilizer, like a fertilizer. <laughs> to improve us. us. Challenge is like a tonic to our anointing. our anointing. You hear that? That's not.
Don't forget your challenge can be affliction, can be hardship, can be temptation, can be setback, can be joblessness. So try to understand that. So when you know that, yes, you have overcome. It's a challenge, it's a tonic, it's a fertilizer. So why are we lamenting them? Why are we worried? Because once you, when challenges come and once you worry, the purpose has been defeated. Purpose has been defeated. Ah, depth. And when you are worried, your heart will be in prison at the same time. Worry imprisoned our heart. And when your heart is in prison, you cannot communicate to Heavenly Father. You need free heart to communicate, to talk to God. When you have sickness and you are worried, then the purpose of that challenge has been defeated. I mean, you are in prison. Once our heart is in prison, if we are finished. So don't worry yourself. This is what you say, leave it for God. So once you worry, your heart is in prison because joyful heart for God. So take note of this. Okay? The worry means fear. The sickness, the challenge does not kill, but the fear of it kills. The challenge does not keep, but the fear of it destroys. It is the fear of that challenge that, that destroys us, that destroys our relationship with God. Fear will take you to occultic, to witch doctor. Fear can take one to John secret courts. Fear will make you to begin to look at Jesus in a very bad light. With fear, you cannot read your Bible. Fear, you cannot pray. Whom are you praying to? So that is the word fear means worry. Hmm. The Bible says, in this world, there will be what? Challenges. Put it that way. In this world, there will be challenges. Cheer up. That is, stop worry. Cheer up. Stop worry. I have overcome. In this war, this war, this is why I say life is not perfect. In this world, there will be challenges. In this world, there will be situation. Cheer up. That is, stop worrying. Stop lamenting. Stop complaining. That is the meaning of cheer up. Did we really say, stop complaining. I have overcome for you. This is why Jesus said, he made us fit. Me, he has overcome for you. Once you are fit, you can face it. So can we hear from uh, our mommy, our sister? Okay. You just tell us in a different angle. Uh -huh. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I've learned that I'm not supposed to live like the way others live in the world, even if there is no money why, in my pocket. Why you are not supposed to live like the way others? Why? Because I know even if I don't have money in my pocket. No, because you are a child of God. Yes. So it's, it's not issue of money. Oh, okay. When I say your situation is different from others, yes. as a child of God, if one has cancer and is discovered, the doctor discovered by test, this is cancer and you are a child of God. That cancer is different from others. Other cancer key destroy. But Christians that have cancer, their cancer strengthen their desire. That institution is to improve him. 
not to impair him. Take note of that. But once they say, this man has cancer, this man has cancer, the question is, who is this man? Who is this man? It's not the cancer this man has. It's not the cancer this man has that matter. Cancer, can't you hear what I say? So I say, it's not about your situation. So I say, it's not about your setback. So I say, it's not about you. Who is this man? That is the question. Will determine the kind of cancer he has. Who is this man? Will determine the kind of situation he has. So this man is others. Other mean unbelievers. And when others have that situation, the, the cancer is a killer. They cannot escape it. But a child of God with that situation, God is still saying something. Amen. God can use anything to speak to us. You can be going to work in the morning and suddenly you see Python on the way. Lying on a, a very road you need to pass. Big one. And you are the type of person that always afraid. What will you do? Even you give that Python your ID card in your bag. <laughs> Before you run. Your, your identity card and your bag and your... Even everything, you just drop it on the Python and start running. And Python did not ask you to give him the bag and the money. After you have dropped it because of fear, you start running, 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 running. Hey, 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 hey. God is saying something. God does not want you to go to work. If you go to work, something worse will have happened. But to send you back home, something that can threaten you, like cancer. <laughs> so you start running, you abandon your... By the time you get home, you learn something happened in the office. You say, ah, something happened? This is what God is trying to remove you. He often used those things to preserve us. To stop you a while in order to rearrange you. Because you are too fast. Hmm? You are too fast. You are blessed. God gave you blessing and you receive this blessing. And this is a, a small office. You are supposed to remain and continue your business. Because your money comes, you start open offices everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. And they now become a burden to you. Now, situation may come and the, the whole office will be closed down. Or you yourself will fall sick. And if you cannot run the office, the office will close down. That does not mean the hand has come. But to stop you a while in order to rearrange you. Tell us the kind of situation in the past God might have used. Emmanuel. The, uh, okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, my name is Albert. You know, my past situation that God I really used, I was in prison. And during prison, you know, that's the time that I spent some time reading the Bible. So that's the time that I got to know God and I know more about God when I was in prison. Clap for, clap for him. You listen to that? Because he is aware that God used that situation to strengthen him, to prepare him, to strengthen his desire and determination for God. He will never regret it is when we regret, ah, no, man, this, uh, yeah, I spend, this is it. This is when we continue to make more mistakes. But he's thanking God, and it's not even regret, he's happy that ah, that situation is not waste. God was still saying something. Clap for him, clap for him. Thank you. So can somebody stand up and tell us, you are going to tell us, the kind of situation God must have used in the past to prepare you or to rearrange you or to stop you a while. Okay? 
My name is Captain Nana Mamponta from Ghana. About two years ago, when I first got into the armed forces, everything was rosy. I passed my first promotional exams. I got married when I wanted to get married. A month after my marriage, I had a child. So I thought life would be like that. But I realized that when I wanted a second child, it wasn't coming. I started complaining. I started feeling anguish. Then a time came for me to do my second promotional exams to the next stage. I tried and I failed the practicals. This situation made me go more to church, read more the Bible, seek the face of God more. And to the glory of God, at his appointed time, I did the, a second trial of my practicals and I passed my promotional exams. And at his right time, he's giving me a second fruit of the womb. Yes, I do so what is your relationship with God now? Are you, are you fully persuaded concerning mm. the word of God? No, nothing will take me away from the love of God. Not, more than before? More than before. Thank now you. Now I seek the face of God more in all situations. Thank you. And uh, don't, don't forget to carry those children along with you. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Don't forget to carry those children God has given you. Yes, sir. When it comes to the issue of God, anywhere you step for God, you allow, let them join you stepping. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. That's the greatest legacy you can give to your children. Yes, sir. Amen. Oh, Our mommy here mentioned two miracles at first. Once one is disappointed, worry come. You begin to worry. And when you are worried, your heart will never be at its best. And uh, once your heart is not at its best, you are in prison. Your heart is in prison. The heart that is in prison cannot communicate with the Heavenly Father. When you go around now, that is the challenge many of us are facing. When we bring your heart out now, you see within that heart worry, anxiety, pain of the past, offense. So such heart cannot see God Blessed are the heart that was, that pure. So this is the challenge we are facing. And the Satan is aware of that, that the only way he can get you is to make you worry. Is to make sure that your vehicle, your car, engine knock. When it's knock, and it is time to go to church. You say, ah, no, I cannot go to church with my engine car knock. And you have forgotten before you had that car, you were sleeping in the church. You were trekking, even trekking from your house to the church. But God has given you a car now, and the engine knock, you cannot come to church. Okay, let's listen to Emmanuel, um, a life example to me was uh, in 2016. I was very sick, so I was taken to hospital. There, I was having a stomach problem. They ran all manner of tests. The doctors said they could not discover what the problem is, but they said they are going to operate on me, which I refused. I said no. They said why? Well, I said, I have a God. Let me go and meet my God. So luckily for me, I went can, to church. Can I say something? Yeah. Will I believe that uh, you have a girl? That is why you refuse the operation or fear of death. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. No, please let us talk. Let's, 
these two questions, which is clear to me, because this is what I discover. What? So, no, uh, you try all means. Finally, before, the operation is the last. When they say, no way, no way, no way, no way. But for you to say, after a lot of tests, and they discover that they must do operation, and you say to the doctor, ah, no, I have a God. I have a God. That God will have done it first, and you go for tests to see, to see the result of positive results. When that trouble was so much, you will have gone to that God, you wish you know it's an alpha and omega. It will have done it, and you just go to the doctor, test me, the, the sickness is gone. But in this case, we have done a test, a test, a test, the pain was so much, test, test, later, they said there's nothing we can do, we have to operate you. No, I have a God. <laughs> Let's hear from you. So I what to, later happened to your God? I, I went to church and I prayed and I was made whole. I was healed. The pain disappeared. With that, I didn't take any drug. I didn't, take, I didn't go back to the hospital again. There's nothing about taking the drug. But the pain went. If you don't believe God with your tablet, you will not believe God without tablets. Then, Tell your neighbor, if you don't believe God with your tablets, you will not believe God without tablets. Tell your neighbor. This tablet is, uh, is, is, is nature. So what is now different between the Jew, like different Jews you put together and make a tea day in the morning, and the tablet you are talking about, that's no different. So it's nature, and God is God of nature. God is the God of nature. So I want you to clap for my sister, because you really, you, 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 you took us to many areas people want to hear. So thank you very much. You have more to say? Yes. Okay, say it. Another question was um, when I wrote my first jam, I couldn't get the desired uh, score for the course I want to do. Okay. So I have to pray and fast and told God, this is what I, the course I want to read and just help me to but, get But desired. that jam, you have first choice, second choice? Yeah, but there's a particular hey, wait, course. Wait, wait, you answer my question. If <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going. <laughs> You have first choice, second choice. Yes. And there's no alternative for our faith. The, my first choice and second choice is the same thing, but I have you, different. You know things. this first choice, second choice, what normally costs? It costs you not to put all your effort. You know, if I lose this, I will go to this. But if it is just only one course you apply for, you cho one choice you apply for, you know there's no other way. Uh 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 uh. Glad for her, glad for her, glad for her. Thank you, thank you, my sister. So the big challenge, even what has happened to us, is happened to our children. They, we always have alternative, 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 alternative. Some will sit here and say, ah, if that pain is not going, I will go to deep. This. Uh, uh, this place, I will go there. But today, let me just stay. Next week, I will not come. I will go to another place. We always have alternative, 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 alternative to our life. Alternative, 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 and the same alternative that have ruined us today. Not only us, our children. One faith, one love, one God. One Holy Spirit. You listen to me? One God, one love, one faith, one Holy Ghost. Alternative, 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 alternative. And the whole thing is alternative all over the world today. You, I hope you, you are getting your faith back. So some faith are very weak with what we are hearing now. Some of our mommy and daddy and those who are sick, you see them with a plan card, 
Some of you, when you see them with the sickness or affliction, you say, ah, because of their sin. Ah, because of their shortcoming. Ah, 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 ah. A man can be sick in body and yet be a friend of God. Tell your neighbor. A man can be sick. That sickness could be anything. It could be cancer, it could be HIV, it could be this. Sickness is sickness. A man can be sick in body and yet be a favorite of Jesus. So today, you see people die silent because they don't want people to know they are sick, what people will say. People will say, ah. They are not a Christian, they are not a pastor, they keep, but they can disclose their trouble to doctor, but to God, no. A man can be poor and yet be a friend of God. We should not allow our wealth, our blessing, our situation our condition to dictate or to rule our life. Be careful. The outcome of your prayer should not affect your faith. Because you pray and your prayer is not answered does not mean you don't have faith. Because we base our faith on outcome of our prayer. People today base their faith on outcome. I, I don't have faith. That is why my prayer is not answered. No, I don't have faith. I will not pray. No, 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 no. Stop base your faith on outcome of your prayer. Not in Jesus' name. See, that man has so much faith. Look at it. He commanded that and it happened. But I keep command no way. No. Don't base your faith on the outcome of your prayer. Tell your neighbor. Emmanuel, my name is Uchobasi. I, 2016, when pa Papa was uh, telling us about passport and forgiveness, there was a man that busted cry at the audience on 14th February, 2016, and was crying that uh, he had helped people in his life and all of them have failed him. So I was in the overflow at Ghana Church. So he instructed that we should call the people that we have uh, offended us and those would have offended us. So I, after the service, I called the, I called the friend and I make an amends. But the deep, in, deep down in me, I haven't forgiven him. I, I still bear some grudges within me. And it took me some years till last year, December, when I was struck with difficulties in my life. And I looked for a friend to call. Nobody was there to answer me. So deep in me, God asked me to call that friend that, help, that, that, that hurt me previously that I wouldn't forgive. So I, I forgave him and went to him. At that point in time in my life, everything that I, I wanted for all those years came back within one month. So Clap for him. Thank you. Good. Good. This is a testimony and the people need to hear. You listen to that? The dividends of forgiveness. I say, it's just listen to him, forgive, and say what follow. What you have been looking for for many years, what you have been praying for, will come. Forgive and see what follow. I believe your faith is lifted up. And I take it once again. Being a child of God is a moment. Not just a moment, but a real one. And being born again is a real moment. Real moment. And the moment brings excitement. If truly you are a child of God, excitement. Even when money is not in the pocket, be excited. When there's no food on the table, be excited. It honors God. 
when we believe in him, when things look rough, the turn of God, when you believe in him, things look rough. When there's no money in your pocket and you believe in him, it honor him so much than when there's money in the pocket. Tell your neighbor, it honor God to believe in him when there's no money in the pocket than when there's money in the pocket. It honor God believe in him when there's no food on the table than when there's food on the table. Are you with me now? What I'm saying in the same day is turn on him when you believe in him when you are sick than when you are not sick. It turn on him so greatly, so much. When you are sick, when you believe in him, than when you are not sick and you believe in him. So, and this is what Satan has been using to rob us, our blessing. Once we are sick, we cannot pray. Once we are sick, faith is gone. We begin to look at Jesus in a very bad light. That, ah, what have I done? Why is this sickness? I'm doing well. I'm going to church. I've stopped smoking. I've stopped lying. As if you are the one stopped that smoking. Can anyone have power to stop smoking, to stop lying? Truth is not our work, but lying is our work. Tell your neighbor. <laughs> to say the truth is not our work. It's God's work. But to tell lie is our work. It's our, we, are, we are very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is what you should know. To tell lies, yes, yeah, that is our war. But truth, how can you say I stop smoking? To smoke is our war, but to stop is not our war, it's God's war. To drink is our war. To stop drinking is not our war, it's God's work. Tell your neighbor. Oppose <laughs> every, every, every like that. To destroy. Destruction is our war. Build is not our war, it's God's war. I can not say, ah, why all this now? I've stopped lying. Why all this sickness? Uh, is it your war to stop? Can you stop? Even if, if you try to stop on your own, you stop smoking on your own. When you sleep, you smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you smoke well, well. <laughs> and this is what has happened. You will now smoke and smoke and smoke. By the time you wake up, you start looking for cigarettes. So I hope you are blessed. Amen. So thank you.